Come on, get ready. We're going to start this morning, said Bear, coming back into the house. He was talking to his wife, Antelope. The sun is shining. I don't think it'll rain any more for a while. We must go and visit your sister, who is living with the crane people, and it's a long way from here. Come on, gather up your things. Strap the baby on the cradle board. Pack enough food for a few days, jerked meat, and dried fish and acorn meal, enough for several days on the trail. It's a long way from here to the village of the cranes. Come on, fox boy, get ready. Let's get started. Antelope strapped baby quail on the cradle board. Then she called out to fox little boy, Hurry up, put on your new moccasins. But the little fox boy cried, I don't want to. I don't want to put on my moccasins. I don't want to. I don't want to. Don't you want to come see the world? No, I don't want to. I don't want to, cried the little boy fox, stamping his feet. Oh, I see, said Bear. You've got the ha-has this morning. Oh, that's too bad. That's too bad. Well, all right. You'd better stay here, then, and watch the house for us until we return. Come on, Antelope. Let's go. So they started along the trail. Bear was packing the food on his back, and in his hand he held his bow, and the arrows were in a quiver on his back. Antelope carried on her back the baby quail strapped on the cradle board, and in her hand she held her digging stick. They started along the trail, tross, 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 and pretty soon Little Fox came running after them with his moccasins in his hand. Wait for me! Wait for me! I want to see the world! So they waited for him to sit down and put on his new moccasins. Why, you've got them on the wrong foot, little boy. The other way, the other way. Now they started again along the trail, but Fox cried, Oh, I forgot my bows and arrows. I have to have my bows and arrows to hunt. All right, hurry up. We'll wait for you. He came back crying, I, I can't find them, I can't find them. The little boy fox was standing in the middle of the trail, crying and rubbing the tears with his tail. Oh, I see, said Bear. You've got the ha-has again. That's bad. You'll never be a man, I'm afraid. You'll never be a hunter. It never was that a hunter cried because he couldn't find his bows and arrows. Hunters always put their things away carefully. But we'll help you find them this time. Maybe you'll learn. Maybe you'll be a man some day. And now they started on the trail again. Tross, tross, tross. They stopped at the house of Turtle Old Man. Now, he was Bear's uncle. They stopped in front of his house and called. He heard them and he stuck his head out of the smoke hole. There was no door to his house and no window, just a hole in the roof for the smoke from the fire to go out. And the smoke hole was for the door also. He stuck his head out and called, Hey, what do you want? Where are you going? We are all going west. We are on our way to visit our relatives who live near the ocean. And Fox Boy added, And I'm going to play with my cousins. Wait a minute, said Turtle Old Man. I'll give you some beads to take as a present. It never was that you go and visit people without bringing them some little thing. And when you get to the hawk's village, give these arrowheads to the two hawk chiefs and tell them to send me some more good flint from their mountain of black glass. And don't forget to stop at Coyote's house. Coyote Old Man is a fine doctor and a great medicine man. And here is a cocoon rattle for him. I've made it very carefully. But don't stop at Weasel's house. He is a bad man. He burned the world once because he was mad. You'd better leave him alone. He doesn't like people. Well, goodbye. I'll watch over your house while you're gone. And now they started on the trail again. Tross, tross, tross. They traveled all day, and in the evening... They got to the top of a ridge from which they could see the ocean far away. 
Not far from there they found the spring of water under some big pine trees. Here is a good place to camp, said Bear. Gather some firewood while I go hunt a rabbit. No, let me hunt the rabbit, said Fox, and he went out with his bows and arrows. But very soon he came back crying. The rabbits won't keep still. Antelope said, You go after them too fast. You must learn to creep up on them slowly. It takes a long time to learn to be a hunter. It takes a long time to learn to be a man or a woman. Well, what shall I do? asked Little Fox, sucking the end of his tail. Take your tail out of your mouth and go get some firewood. No, I don't want to. It's too heavy. I don't want to. No, no, no. Little Fox got into a rage and started to stamp his foot, and he got so mad he stamped his own tail. Listen, I'll go gather firewood. You swing your sister Quail to keep her quiet. Now that's a job for an older brother. Oh yes, I can do that, said Fox. Antelope hung the cradleboard from a pine branch and went after firewood. Now Bear came back with two cottontail rabbits. They roasted them on the coals of the fire and ate them with acorn bread. Then they spread their rabbit skin blankets on the ground. Then Bear called, Good night, mountains. You must protect us tonight. We are strangers, but we are good people. We don't mean harm to anybody. Good night, Mr. Pine Tree. We are camping under you. You must protect us tonight. Good night, Mr. Owl. I guess this is your home where we are camped. We are good people. We are not looking for trouble. We are just traveling. Good night, Chief Rattlesnake. Good night, everyone. Good night, grass people. We have spread our bed right on top of you. Good night, ground. We are lying on your face. You must take care of us. We want to live a long time. A fox was sleeping between his parents, and between him and Antelope was a little baby quail. Fox said, Oh, look! The sun is coming back on the other side. No, little boy, that's the moon. He is the elder brother of the sun, and he works at night. Oh, well, good morning, Mr. Moon. No, silly, you mean good night. No, I don't. It's good morning for the moon. All right, go to sleep. Bear was already snoring. And now Antelope set up. She looked into the shadows and sang softly a song of the night. It said, Dream for my child, so he will have power. <laughs>